FEA Tools contains a number of finite element based tools for branch connections in pipe, nozzle connections in vessels, structural attachments, and supports on bends. The component of FEA Tools highlighted in this presentation, however, is the Caesar II FEA Translator. The FEA Translator performs a variety of functions. However, it basically reads in a Caesar II model, runs a finite element analysis of each branch connection in that Caesar II model, and then builds a more applicable Caesar II model using SIFs and flexibilities from the finite element calculations. This higher level translator also helps evaluate the criticality of piping systems based on general properties and lets the user compare one Caesar II output to another Caesar II output. Let's go through a step-by-step -step procedure and see exactly how the translator modules in FEA tools work. The basic steps in the improved analysis procedure are, first, we run the original Caesar II model. Next, we run the translator to get an improved Caesar II model based on FEA and test results. The translator writes this new Caesar II model automatically. Third, we run the new Caesar II model. And then fourth, we compare the results of the new model to the results from the old or the original Caesar II model. Let's use the B313-S303 example problem as a test case. The S303 piping system is tight, it includes six welding tees, and is overstressed per the code. We use FEA tools because it will include more applicable data for the welding tees. And in this situation in particular, we're interested in how the flexibilities can affect the results. First, we select the original Caesar II model. When the model appears, we can see here that it is clearly the S303 geometry, and after checking it, we can see that it's ready to run. To run the model, we click on the Batch Run button in Caesar II. Caesar II performs the structural and B313 code calculations as we see here, and then the Caesar II output panel appears. From this output, we can see automatically that the model's overstressed. Load cases listed in red are overstressed. We recognize that this is a very tight piping system with no bends and little straight pipe, and so we suspect that the flexibilities of the six welding tees, even though they might be small, may still drop the moments significantly, and so we'd like to see how much the moments can drop. So for this, we run FEA Tools. So now we exit Caesar, and we start FEA Tools. From the FEA Tools data panel, we select the Caesar II FEA Translator. When the Translator input form appears, we browse for the original Caesar II model that we just ran. Once we've selected the Caesar II input file name, a default file name with dash FEA appended is used as the default output Caesar model name. Once the file names are picked, we press the green Convert button. At that point, FEA Tools will read the original Caesar II model, find all the branch connections in the model, it builds a list of the unique branch connections, and then runs a finite element analysis for each of those branch connections. When the first branch connection FEA analysis is completed, plots of the stress distribution due to the code loading directions are displayed. When all the T's are analyzed, a new Caesar II model file is written with the flexibility and updated SIF data used for each T. The charted output from the FEA Tools Translator includes plots of branch and run SIFs for the axial loads, in-plane, out-of-plane, and torsional moments, and for pressure. Where they exist, the plots compare the current B313 code values with correlation equation results and the FEA output. The last two charts here contain branch and run K factors. Text reports contain the tabular data that was used to create these charts, and it includes some additional system summary data. Once the translator is finished running, a new Caesar II model that contains more applicable branch connection data is written. The FEA results in this file, of course, aren't limited to a D over T ratio of 100. We want to see if the more applicable model is overstressed, and so we open the new Caesar file written by FEA Tools and rerun the Caesar analysis calculation. When the model appears in Caesar II, we can see that there are a number of additional flexibilities at each of the branch connections. These were inserted automatically by FEA Tools. The new model is prepared and ready to run, and so all we need to do is click on the Batch Run option. All the load cases 
and additional data from the old model is copied forward into this new model so that it's immediately ready to run. The Caesar 2 calculation is performed exactly as before, and when the output form appears, we can see immediately that there's no longer any overstressed areas in the model. The local flexibilities from the welding tees provided most of the flexibility for the entire piping system, and so the moments dropped dramatically. So let's review the approach that we just went through. First, we built a standard Caesar model the way we always would. This can include importing the model wholly from CADWorks if we want to. Next, we performed the standard Caesar analysis. Then we asked FEA tools to perform an FEA calculation on all the T's and insert the more applicable SIF and flexibilities from that FEA calculation into a new version of the Caesar piping model. Then lastly, we ran the new version of the Caesar piping model to get a more applicable analysis. And in this case, we saw that the actual stresses were well below the allowable. Now let's answer a few questions that are commonly asked by pipe stress engineers that start using FEA tools. When engineers see the S303 example, we're often asked if FEA tools Caesar models will always resolve overstress problems. Now the answer to this question, of course, is no. When more applicable models of complex systems are constructed, sometimes the stresses go down, and sometimes the stresses go up. More often than not, the stresses go down, but not always. Including more accurate flexibilities in a piping system analysis generally means that displacements at least someplace are going to increase. And when the displacements go up, some loads in the system may go up, while other loads in the system go down. This is particularly true when the piping system has multiple branches and is closely coupled or is considered tight. Another question we often get asked concerns comparing displacements, load, and stresses. We're asked if the user has to compare all displacements in all load cases for all nodes to see if anything's changed when new SIFs and Ks are used in the model. Now, as it turns out, this is a common output review problem. And of course, the answer, or the generic answer, is yes. The user must always look at all displacements, all loads, and all stresses for all nodes, for all load cases, when reviewing any model that's been changed. For complex interacting systems, it's not uncommon for a change at point A to produce changes at points B and C. This can happen when any design changes are made to a piping system, or when flexibilities at T's are added, as is done when we run FEA tools. Fortunately, FEA tools has a comparison tool built in to help us solve this model review dilemma. The tool brings the Caesar output from two models into the PRG standard output format, which is a MIM format, and then automatically finds the biggest differences for all properties of interest in the output for all nodes for all load cases, and then generates plots and tables that contain those differences. Our adjusted approach is shown here in this image. Whenever we have an improved or different model run, the comparison tool can be used to review and compare the results from two different analyses. In this case, we want to compare the original Caesar 2 output results from the S303 model to the new Caesar 2 output results, where the new results are from the model built using FEA tools. In the Options menu for FEA Tools, the Comparison program is selected. When the Comparator form appears, the input file names for the models that should be compared must be entered. Then if there's a particular node range or load case range of interest, those can be entered here along with any selected units to be used. And then the Compare button is pressed. So let's see how this works. Here we see the FEA Translator main menu. We select Options and then the Comparison tool. When the comparison window appears, we browse for the two files whose results we want to compare. Since we're using the S303 model, the results are not complicated, so we don't need any node or load case ranges. And the results can be displayed in any set of units. We'll leave the defaults here. This is all we need for the S303 comparison, and so we press the Compare button. Depending on the size of the job and the number of load cases, the conversion to the MIM database for all the outputs might take up to about 30 seconds or so. But when the comparison is completed, a standard set of plots and tables are produced. Here we see the resultant displacement comparisons. 
These plots show how the flexibilities changed the resultant displacements for almost every node in the model. The plot on the left gives the largest resultant displacement differences for all nodes for any load case ordered as the nodes appear in the model. The blue line are the displacements from the original analysis. The orange line are the displacements from the FEA modified analysis. The plot on the right contains the same data as the plot on the left, but the right plot data is sorted where the largest displacement difference is on the left side of the plot and the smallest displacement difference is on the right side of the plot. Tables of the values are included below each plot. There are only two restraints in the S303 that can support moments, and so we see that the moment range for the original model in blue is more than twice as high as the moment range from the new model in orange. And the stress comparisons are as we might expect. The stresses in the original model with rigid branches is more than double than the stress in the new model with more applicable flexibility data for the welding tees. The next question we're commonly asked is, if a user needs to run FEA tools for every piping system analyzed? The answer to this question is also no. Although users can certainly run FEA tools for every model if they want to, FEA tools is easy and quick enough to run. It definitely helps the user understand how sensitive the model might be to more applicable SIFs and flexibilities. Experience has shown that probably 70% of the models analyzed aren't practically sensitive to more applicable SIFs and flexibilities because either the loads are low or because where the loads are high, the SIFs are low. When the D over T ratios are high, when the cycles are high, when there's rotating equipment, or when the stresses are high, it is usually a good idea to run FEA tools at least once for that piping system. The criticality count tool shown in the webinars can also help the user with this determination. Let's take a quick look at how the criticality count calculator is used. We get to the criticality count calculator from the options menu of the FEA tools translator, or you can download a copy from the Apple Store for your iPhone by looking for Piping System Analyzer in the Apple Store. When the evaluator form appears, enter the critical system parameters required, such as maximum D over T, minimum D over D ratio, the number of cycles, the lowest rated T-type, etc. When the needed data that you know is entered, hit the Evaluate button. Evaluation text appears in a separate form as shown here. For the data that we entered, we can see that the criticality count is 17 and that the system is rated to be of more than average difficulty. The text below the evaluation helps explain how the rating was developed. Let's take this same piping system and assume that there are parts of the piping system that can be considered tight that do include branch connections. Including tight geometries with the other system parameters that we've already entered changed the rating from more than average difficulty to very difficult. If we drop the maximum D over T ratio from 79 to what we'd expect for a typical 4-inch pipe of about 22, we see that we go back to what we might expect for the typical small bore pipe, which is about average difficulty. Now let's take a look at the results from a more complicated example. This model was submitted from a CSER user. The first thing we might do here is run the criticality calculator on the system parameters. The criticality calculator can be run anytime before or after the model is built and or analyzed. Its only real purpose is to give us some idea of what parameters may have a significant impact on the accuracy of our anal analysis. For the more complex system we're looking at now, the rating is somewhat difficult. In this system, we've got a lot of branch connections, so this would definitely add to our interest in this model. So our approach will be to first run the criticality calculator, which we just did. The rating was somewhat difficult, and so the model gets a little bit more of our attention. With our antennas somewhat up on this model anyway, we proceed forward building the Caesar model like we normally would and making the run. 
Once we make the first run with a standard Caesar model, we'd usually fix anything in the model that's obviously wrong. So once we get a good standard Caesar run that looks reasonable, then we would probably run FEA tools to perform an FEA analysis on all the intersections in the model and to write a new Caesar model with the more applicable branch connection data. From this very high level translation, we can see how far off our SIFs and flexibility factors might be. The translator will also produce an improved Caesar model. And so we run it next. And then we'll use the comparison tool to see how the results from these two models compare to each other. Once we run the comparison tool, we know whether improved SIFs and flexibilities have an impact on the design or not. To run the translator, we pick the original Caesar model. The new model the translator is going to create is given a default file name, which is fine for our example. So we press the Convert button to run what is essentially a very high-level Caesar 2 model translation. The FEA results will appear as they're calculated. If a model with the same geometry was analyzed previously, its results will be pulled from the user library. Then when the calculation is finished, a small dialog box will appear. We can retrieve any of the FEA results for any of the branch connections. These plots let us see where high stresses occur and where a crack might be anticipated for uh, a particular loading direction. The graphs show us immediately where intersections exist whose SIFs could be largely in error. In some cases, the FEA SIFs and the existing code SIFs compare fairly well, and that gives us a good feeling about the calculation. In other cases, clear differences can be seen. Some plots, like the branch pressure SIF plot, don't have corresponding B31 or correlation equivalents. These SIFs are only available from a finite element analysis. As we expect, some of the largest SIF differences occur for small D over D ratio branch connections and run side SIFs. And this is as pointed out by Rotobaw in WRC 329. Branch and run K factor charts are included at the bottom of these plots. For the branch, we can see that we have K factors around 50. So there can be 50 extra diameters of pipe in the piping system focused at the branch connection. For the run, we have K factors of around 10. Tabular results for all these plots can be found under the text output tab for each branch connection. SIF comparisons between B31, correlation, and FEA methods are shown. Stiffnesses and flexibility factors for each intersection are included in the tables. After the individual intersection data in the tabular report, tables of branch connection properties and summaries of all the system parameters are printed. Pressure SIFs, for example, are used in this table, along with one of the pressure case values from the model, to perform an allowed pressure cycle calculation. Here are the calculated system parameters. These are the largest D over T, the minimum D over D, and whether or not there's a presence of a non-conservative branch connection D over D ratio in the system. So we've built and run the standard seizure model. We've evaluated the criticality and we've run FEA tools, which both built a new Caesar model for us and printed SIF and K reports. Now we run the new model, and then we're going to compare the results from the original Caesar model with the results from the new or more applicable Caesar model. So let's take a look at how the comparison would work for this system. We select the comparison tool from the FEA translator option menu. We make sure that the file names are correct, we can set any specific node or load case range that we're interested in. Sometimes, in fact, it's not uncommon that you want to do comparisons for a single load case. We can pick any particular or convenient unit set to use for the plotted results. And when we're ready, we press the Compare button. The output for both models is processed by the MIM database, and then the comparison plots are generated automatically. Once the comparisons are made, the worst case differences are found, and the plots and tables are created. Here we see the displacement differences. Most comparison results plots are produced in pairs. The left plot is the maximum displacement differences through the system for the 
note order entered by the user. These left plots are useful because you can see just what parts of the system are affected by the flexibilities. In some cases, most of the plots will show that the FEA results and the original results are right on top of each other, and there'll only be a few parts of the system where there's a difference between the FEA displacements and the original displacements. The right plot contains the same data as the left plot, except that the differences are sorted from largest to smallest. So here we can see that the biggest differences occur for node 9095 in load case 10. The resultant displacement difference goes from 0.57 inches to 0.16 inches at node 9095. The next tab here is for resultant reaction forces on supports. The left plot shows all the largest differences on the support in the order that the support appeared in the model. The right plot shows the same resultant reaction difference data sorted from largest to lowest. We can see here that the largest reaction resultant force is almost cut in half when flexibilities are included in the model. This suggests that some supports may be twice as big as they need to be. We can continue scrolling through the table and find that for the second node listed, the load in the Caesar model with flexibilities is almost 10 times higher than the load on the same support in the model without flexibilities. In this case, increased displacements in some part of the system caused an increase in reaction loads and stresses in another part. Generally, when I use this, I scroll down these right-hand plots until I get to a node where the differences are not so large. When I get to this point, I know that I've looked at all the possible large discrepancies that might actually affect my evaluation of the system. This next report contains essentially the same data, but for moment resultants. We can see that in the worst case, the more applicable flexibility model shows higher loads due to increased displacements. For most supports, the FEA augmented model shows lower restraint resultant moments. The biggest difference, as we see here, is in case 13 at node 5, where the loads from the flexible model are 6,600 foot-pounds, while the loads from the rigid branch model are 2,300 foot-pounds, less than half. The next tab here contains the correlated stress results for nodes where the SIFs are greater than 1. The nodes and elements in these plots are identical in both the new and the old model. Generally, these nodes are at bends, and any difference in the results is due to the load redistribution due to flexibilities added in the model at the branch connections. In the left plot, we see essentially areas of interest. In the right plot, we see the largest differences sorted from left to right. So in this rightmost table, the biggest correlated stress difference is from 14,000 PSI to 9,800 PSI, a difference of 44%. The last stress plot shows uncorrelated stresses. These are stresses at nodes where the SIFs are greater than 1 on elements that didn't appear in one or both of the models. Here we see that the largest uncorrelated stress difference is 31,000 to 22,000 PSI, or a difference of about 41%. So now we must decide if stress changes of more than about 40%, displacements that double, and support loads that can be off by two or more are okay, or will have an impact on the design or safety of this piping system. Now lastly, people ask us how we commonly use this tool. Well, as it turns out, there's a variety of ways. Generally, we want to know that the numbers we're using from our stress analysis are correct. Errant SIFs and errant flexibilities at branch connections can produce some of the biggest errors in a piping system analysis. And so the easy to use FEA tools process helps us correct those problems. More specifically for design, we can run the normal CSER model, and then we can run a more applicable model, and we can use the worst case loads and stresses for design. This is a fairly simple approach which is guaranteed to produce conservative results. As long as it's not too conservative, then we're okay. If you're in a critical situation where changes to the routing are expensive and being off is not an option, then we use the more applicable data. Whenever we're doing a failure analysis, we would of course always use the more applicable data because these are numbers that we think are the most accurate. In any case, when we use FEA tools, we definitely know more about our system and we're definitely getting more accurate results. We're definitely getting more applicable results for calculations where the numbers are important.